Hello and good morning. I'd like to thank everyone for joining me today as we celebrate our graduates of the U.S. Naval War College Class of 2020. We're clapping here and I know everyone's clapping online. Uh, I'm here with my husband, David Scovel, uh, to mark this momentous occasion. And I am just so proud to be able to be here to congratulate these remarkable achievements from our 2020 graduates. It's so unfortunate we can't be together today uh, to be out on the field, to be under the tent and to see each other in person. But I am very, very happy that you've made the choice to come to this online venue and celebrate together and with our Naval War College community. I appreciate this time with you and I know that you appreciate the time with our community and especially this special day with your family and close friends. Before we begin, begin to get today's ceremony, I would like to take a moment to make some two very special announcements. And that is this year's honor graduates. So uh, these honor graduates were selected for their academic performance, their participation in Naval War College activities, participation in civic and community activities, and promotion of armed forces and government services in the public interest. And so without further ado, I am proud to announce this year's Stephen Bleeker Luce Award from the College of Naval Warfare, Commander John Selwood. Woo! Commander Selwood was the seminar leader for JMO Final Exercise. Uh, he was a seminar leader for NDSM Final Exercise. Uh, the first one he was selected by moderators, the second one by his fellow students. Uh, he was the NCC board member and the yearbook lead, and I have seen the yearbook. He was uh, also participated in various community involvement uh, events, uh, both back home in New Zealand and while here in Newport. And might I say that this is the very first time that one of our international military students has received this award. Congratulations. Uh, Commander Selwyn coordinated and accompanied the first visit to U.S. Naval War College by a New Zealand ambassador. Uh, that happened this fall, and I was so delighted to meet her. And um, Commander Selwood and his spouse both took a leading role in maintaining a social connection for the NCC and for all of his colleagues throughout the year. So once again, congratulations. And next... Receiving the William Snowden Sims Award from the College of the Naval Command and Staff, Major Albert Evans, United States Marine Corps. Woohoo! Uh, he was his seminar leader and his TDSM seminar academic representative. He received honorable mention for a paper submitted for Vice Admiral James H. Doyle Jr., Military Operations and International Law. He traveled to Belize to lecture Belize Defense Forces on international law and cooperation with the U.S. forces in February. He coached local youth soccer team, and he participated in the President's Cup um, and in specifically in the Cardines uh, Baseball Classic, which was such a great event for our college and our community. What a great uh, afternoon and evening that was. Um, our award recipients will be printed in a printed um, a graduation program, which you will receive with your diplomas uh, as they go out to you um, in your onward travel. And uh, these awardees will also be presented a clock from our Navy League. And I'd like to thank the Navy League for uh, sponsoring and supporting uh, these two awards. And congratulations again to our honor grads 2020. Way to go! Woohoo! Let's hear it in the chat. So, uh, without further ado, I would like to turn over the presentation to our fantastic team uh, that has been compiling your achievements and working so hard to give us a quality uh, experience today. I'd like to add my uh, specific congratulations 
And I'd like to say that on behalf of the faculty and the staff of the United States Naval War College, we couldn't be prouder. And it has been our honor to be associated with the class of 2020, to have been there alongside you as we faced uh, very, very unique challenges in the spring. And we are so proud of you and your accomplishments. And so now let's see our graduation ceremony. Ladies and gentlemen, good morning and welcome to the United States Naval War College graduation ceremony for the class of 2020. I'm Captain Dieterle, Dean of Students and your MC for today's ceremony. The national anthem will be sung by musician second class Rachel Vanell from Navy Band Northeast. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watched were so gallantly streaming and the rocket red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the land of the free and the hope of the brave commander robert s nelson chaplain of the Naval Leadership and Ethics Center will deliver the invocation. I invite you to join me as I pray. God of power and might, wisdom and justice. As we mark the graduation of these men and women from the Naval War College, we offer our gratitude for the gifts and talents you have lavished upon them. For their family, friends and faculty, who have cheered them on through the process, for the commands that let them go so that they might return more ably fit for higher levels of leadership, and for the commands that will receive them and put them quickly to work. Theirs was a remarkable journey, unlike any class before them, and they are returning to commands in the midst of unprecedented historic challenges. I ask that you would continue to fuel their passion, sharpen their reason, that they might creatively exploit chance on behalf of the defense of the people, nations, and alliances they represent, and the values they share. May your spirit move among us today, though we may be dispersed in presence, may we be united in spirit, and may this graduation be a fitting testament to the vital work they have accomplished. In your holy name I pray, amen. It is my honor to present Rear Admiral Shoshana S. Chatfield, 57th President of the United States Naval War College. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, honored guests, deans, chairs, our extraordinary professors and scholars, family and friends, and most importantly, the class of 2020. It is an honor for me today to introduce the 20th Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General Mark A. Milley. General Milley, is our nation's highest ranking military officer and the principal military advisor to the President, Secretary of Defense, and National Security Council. Prior to becoming chairman on October 1st, 2019, 
General Milley served as the 39th Chief of Staff of the United States Army. A native of Massachusetts, General Milley graduated from Princeton University in 1980, where he received his commission from Army ROTC. General Milley has had multiple command and staff positions in eight divisions and special forces throughout the last 39 years. While serving as the commanding general three corps, General Milley deployed as the commanding general, International Security Assistance Force, Joint Command, and deputy commanding general, U.S. Forces Afghanistan. In addition to his bachelor's degree in political science from Princeton University, General Milley has a master's degree in international relations from Columbia University and one from the United States Naval War College in National Security and Strategic Studies. He is also a graduate of the MIT Seminar 21 National Security Studies Program. General Milley and his service chiefs recently signed their vision and guidance for professional military education and talent management, titled Developing Today's Joint Officers for Tomorrow's Ways of War. General Milley, we here at the United States Naval War College appreciate your guidance and focus on the development of strategically minded joint warfighters so that we may better produce the leaders our nation needs. Thanks, Admiral Chatfield, for that introduction, but more importantly, for your leadership. The Naval War College has sustained standards of excellence in delivering world-class education since 1884. This college has created leaders who positively affect substantive change in the military, across the government, and among our many allies and partners around the globe. As a proud graduate of this institution 20 years ago, I'm proud and humbled to be with you today. Take a moment to look to your left and look to your right. Among you is a future chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, a service chief, a combatant commander, agency directors, and many of you undoubtedly will soon be generals and admirals. You will all lead this nation's joint force in our allied and partner militaries at the highest levels. Each of you will have the responsibility to protect our country, and you are all exceptionally talented, steeped in fundamental values, and ready for the challenges ahead. All of you have been operating in dynamic environments for the better part of two decades, whether conducting counterinsurgency operations in the Middle East, flying strategic deterrence missions around the Pacific, or sailing through choke points critical to our nation's economic security interests. None of you are strangers to difficult missions. Reflect for a moment on what you have seen just while here. China and Russia are in every domain and actively seek opportunities to challenge America's security. Both countries are determined to undermine our network of allies and partners as they seek to weaken existing international order. North Korea threatens our regional allies and potentially our homeland with the development of nuclear and ballistic missile capabilities. Iran is the world's largest state sponsor of terrorism, and they have taken advantage of instability to expand their malign influence and challenge the interests of the United States and our allies and partners throughout the Middle East. And violent extremism, it remains a trans-regional struggle requiring sustained political, fiscal, and military effort. And here at home, the recent medical crisis has cost 120,000 American lives and has stressed our health system, our economy, and the social fabric of our communities. We have also been witness to widespread civil unrest that has roots deep into our historical past. All of these challenges and many more contribute to a security environment that is increasingly unpredictable and under strain. This is the environment in which each of you will operate as senior officers. The dynamic nature of the current security environment is counterbalanced by an international order established 75 years ago at the end of World War II, the bloodiest war in human history. In the short period of 31 years, from 1914 to 1945, World Wars I and II were fought among the great powers of the day, and 150 million people around the world were killed in the conduct of great power war. In World War I, from September to November 1918, just eight weeks, the American Expeditionary Force fought the Battle of the Meuse-Argonne at the expense of 26,000 Americans killed in action and another 96,000 wounded. 26 years later, at the height of World War II, in another eight-week period from June to August 1944, 
Americans hit the beaches in Normandy on their way to liberate Paris from Nazi control. In that campaign, 24,000 Americans were killed in action and another 100,000 were wounded. At the same time, around the world in the Central Pacific, we took Saipan, Guam, and Tinian, suffering another 26,000 casualties in the Marianas campaign. We fought from Anzio to Rome to seize it from the Nazis and give our bombers reach into Germany. In the Southwest Pacific, we fought in the Burma and New Guinea campaigns, all in the summer of 1944. In those intense eight weeks, American soldiers, sailors, airmen, Marines, and Coast Guardsmen suffered more than 210,000 casualties, with 57,000 paying the ultimate sacrifice. And that does not include the hundreds of thousands of allies and innocent civilians who were killed. That is great power war. That's what the international order is designed to prevent. Today, we talk about terms like great power competition and great power war in conversations and classrooms so easily, but not so for the greatest generation. One year ago, I had an opportunity to go to the 75th anniversary of the Normandy landings. I was talking to several of the veterans there and asked one of them simply, what is your lesson from World War II? What is the great lesson for those of us in uniform today? He looked up at me and tears came to his eyes and he said, General, never let it happen again. Never let it happen again. In 1945, people throughout the world said never again. So they set up processes, policies, laws, and organizations that today we commonly refer to as the international order with the goal of preventing another great power war. Twice before in history, I'm aware of, from 1648 to 1750 under the Treaty of Westphalia, and from 1815 to 1914 under the Concert of Europe, there was an international order established on the continent of Europe. Both lasted about 100 years. We are now in the 75th year of the current international order, and it's under tremendous stress. Today, your mission, my mission, is to prevent another great power war and maintain the great power of peace. I offer you three lessons to consider on how to prevent great power wars you shortly become senior leaders. The first is vigilance. We must identify signs of aggression, especially during periods when we are wary from conflict or otherwise preoccupied. These are the times when aggressors sense opportunities. From many historical examples, we know the indicators. Rapid military expansion, aggressive foreign policies, economic intimidation, violations of international norms, growing nationalism and bellicose rhetoric. We see many of these indicators in today's international environment, demonstrated by the potential adversaries identified in our national defense strategy. Hone your ability to understand the context of what you read day to day by being an avid consumer of multiple forms of media, daily review of current intelligence, a committed study of international politics and geostrategy, and a, a very deep understanding of military history. And history itself, it never repeats, but it does rhyme, to paraphrase Mark Twain. More importantly, it can help each of us think through similar challenges that we may face. The second lesson is to maintain a high degree of readiness throughout the joint force so that we may preserve the peace through strength. Our adversaries will be deterred by our military capabilities and our resolve to use them. If deterrence fails, we must be prepared to fight and win. That includes preparing our leaders to observe, orient, decide, and act with skill and confidence, often amid the fog of war. You each have finished an intense year of study to do just that. After World War II, we embarked on a multi-decade challenge of forming and sustaining the global order that we know today. For seven and a half decades, we have not had a great power war. For sure, there's been many wars since 1945, but none have been a great power war, in large part because of the capability of the United States military. We're not the only reason, but we are one of the most significant reasons. And lastly, the third observation I would offer is the importance of allies and partners. We are most successful when we collaborate with allies and partners to achieve common security goals. Alliances and key partners have ensured a period of stability by discouraging aggressive behaviors from our adversaries. We must continue to develop these relationships and maintain the strength we have as a network of nations to encourage a stable world order. There is great strength in times of crisis when we and our allies and partners remain equally committed to a common cause. 
So we are now in the 75th year of the international order bestowed upon you and me by those that came before us. And that international order is under stress. It's being challenged and the return of great power competition is highlighted in our NDS, which all of you have studied this year. And a key element of great power competition is the changing character of war with its rapid technological improvements. To maintain our strength in order to prevent great power war, we are modernizing our joint force through innovative concept development, advanced technology, and new capabilities for the security challenges of the future. The battlefields of today and tomorrow span all domains and feature operations of increasing speed and reach. Compared with operations during the last great power conflict, the speed of information flow between the strategic, operational, and tactical echelons of command is exponentially greater today and only getting faster. The speed of information in today's world offers not only instant feedback to facilitate decision making, but it also creates unforeseen internal friction and can compound the fog of war that comes from information overload and makes it very difficult to separate the signal from the noise. We know that autonomous systems supported by artificial intelligence and high capacity wireless connectivity are the foundation for future military operations. But how we integrate these systems may be decisive in the next conflict within the context of the changing character of war. This will be one of the great military modernization challenges that will happen on your watch. I trust that your experience this past year has put you on a path to better understand and leverage these and many other areas of development to secure our nation. But cutting edge technologies and systems alone will not win the next war. It's our people, our people that solve complex problems and develop innovative ideas. It will soon be your fight to recruit, retain, and promote our very best. As you know, it takes decades to grow a senior uniform leader. And each of you are products of two to three decades of sacrifice and service. So continue to do everything you can to cultivate and protect your ability to keep an eye, open mind, and an eye on the future and the way of doing things, but also your openness to people whose appearance is not the same as yours or who come from a different place than you. Mentor a junior officer or enlisted member with a different background than yours. You will learn from them while they learn from you. And remember that cohesion is a force multiplier and divisiveness leads to defeat. Just as each service wears a different uniform and brings different strengths to the table as an organization, our different experiences and backgrounds as people make us better than we would be alone. The whole is always greater than the sum of its parts. Eliminate anything that divides us. We need all the brilliance of the American people to effectively compete against our adversaries. Our responsibility as military leaders is to ensure that each and every one of our service members are treated fairly with dignity and respect and are inspired to give this institution their very best. Lastly, never forget why you joined the military or decided to serve your country. Remember our oath to support and defend the Constitution and its essential principle, that all men and women are born free and equal and have freedoms of speech and press and religion and the right to peaceful assembly and to vote. Our oath to support and defend the Constitution is the foundation of our military ethos. We, as service members, as an institution, are defined by that oath. At our core, we have the values of honor, integrity, duty, and commitment. But it's all defined by our oath. And we must live those values every day, just as we pledge our lives to protect them in war. We who wear the cloth of our nation must hold dear also the principle of an apolitical military that is so deeply rooted in the very essence of our republic. So relish the opportunity, relish it, to lead the young men and women who embody all that is good about America. You have a responsibility to prepare our future generations of leaders to uphold our values and face our security challenges with unmatched knowledge, skill, and innovation. And to all of you, congratulations. I applaud your achievement and look forward to watching you take the helm of our great joint force well into the future. Thank you, General Milley, for your remarks. And thank you for your participation in this ceremony today and your continued support of this college. Our spring semester would normally have been filled with visits from senior leaders. The vast majority of those visits, however, were put on hold due to COVID restrictions. So hearing from General Milley truly did 
uh, increase our knowledge of what's happening with our senior leadership. And we are so grateful for those valuable insights as our graduates move on to greater levels of responsibility within our Department of Defense, the interagency, and the militaries of our important international partners. To our honored guests who may be watching today, at a typical June graduation under the big white tent, we would have approximately 100 distinguished visitors in attendance. With our virtual format for this graduation though, we have no way of knowing just how many of you are tuned in to witness the conferring of degrees upon these graduates. But we want to welcome you and thank each and every one of you. For those of you who are watching, thank you for joining us. We look forward to welcoming you to Newport in the future. To Mr. George Lang and our fantastic members of the Naval War College Foundation, thank you for your incredible support of the college over this past year. Our students have benefited tremendously from your contributions, and so has our institution, our Navy, and our nation. To our international program sponsors, I know many of you are watching today. Your support for our international students remains unmatched. You play an invaluable role in enhancing the Newport connection and in building trust and friendship with our maritime partners throughout the globe. Thank you for your support. To our faculty and staff, you set the standards of educational excellence in learning, research, and operational expertise. You anticipate the needs of our students and their agencies. And today you see before you the fruits of your labor as you send our graduates, professionals, scholars, and warfighters out into the world to the assignments where they are needed most. Your efforts in educating and developing these leaders will play dividends in their contributions to our nation and our national security in the future. Thank you for your service, your dedication, your enormous adaptability to achieve this mission in the face of a global pandemic and our first complete transition to virtual platforms and telework. To the families and friends of today's graduates, thank you for participating today. And thank you for all the future viewing I hope you'll do to share in the celebration of your graduates' achievements. As they depart from this extraordinary year, your continued encouragement is critical to your loved one's future success. You have been and you will continue to be a tremendous and valued part of their accomplishments. Thank you for your patience, especially this year during moments of uncertainty and change over the last few months, and as always, for your unwavering support. And now to our graduates. Upon your arrival here in Newport, you began an intellectual journey. And for most of you, it was a new experience. It was your full-time job, breaking out of your existing paradigms and mental frameworks, studying new ideas, and participating vigorously in academic discussions that transcended your positions and ranks. You were charged to think critically, to analyze, to strategize, and to innovate. You were tasked to study through the lens of leadership and ethics, history, strategy and policy, operational art, and diplomacy. And through the same lens, you were asked to tackle the myriad challenges that lie ahead for our great nations. Together, drawing from your diverse backgrounds and professional paths, you answered that call. You challenged your faculty, you challenged each other, and most importantly, you challenged yourselves. You have emerged as a class of scholars with commonality in your purposes. You should be rightfully proud of your accomplishments, individually and as a class. Congratulations. Your year here in Newport is concluding in a very different manner than the way it began last summer. Your adaptability and resilience in the face of enormous change is admirable. We asked each of you to convert your homes into your offices, your classroom, your lecture hall, and your research library, all while your families or roommates were doing exactly the same thing. 
Your final weeks in Newport brought to the forefront important social justice questions facing Americans and our American government. An examination of our commitment to the universal values of equality, personal freedom, access to prosperity, and fair treatment under the law. Once again, our rugged and tenacious commitment to freedom of expression and the American dream has been echoed throughout the world. You persevered through the stress of these disruptions and proved your ability to manage complex challenges. Your year here has proven that the future will continue to be characterized by unpredictability and momentous change. This is a new reality in which our senior leaders view continuous learning as a key strategic enabler to the success of our national security forces. And their commitment to resource this kind of education is a direct investment in our warfighting advantage. Your charge now as you prepare to re-enter your operational world, is to commit to the transformative power of education and to link what you've just learned to how we operate, how we organize and invest in preserving the peace, and how we develop the strategies to fight and win. How you will frame problems, develop and assess solutions, and build winning teams depends on enacting what you learned here and continuing to iterate through that process. This year was just one part of the continuum of learning throughout your career, and you must continue to invest your energy in that personal and professional development for yourselves and for those you lead. Do not be content to sit comfortably inside your area of expertise. Instead, press to the edges and seek opportunities to collide with others whose different backgrounds, different exposures, and different ways of thinking will inform you. And together, you will develop innovative ideas, which are the key to our future successes. Take with you what you learned here as a different lens to view the challenges you will inevitably face in the future. Now that you have experienced new ways to influence the future, here at the Navy's home of thought, you are duty bound to take your enhanced intellect, your improved analytical skills, and your expanded perspective, and to lead. To all graduates, today you join a large yet distinguished group of US Naval War College alumni, a group whose membership spans 135 years. I challenge you to continue the growth and success that you started here at the Naval War College and cultivate the relationships that you created here by participating in our alumni community. Please stay connected with each other and with all of us back here in Newport. And to all of our families and friends here today, I thank you again for being your graduates' touchpoint, their pillar of strength, and for taking the time to be here today, virtually, to witness their accomplishment. You should all be rightfully proud. Congratulations, graduates, and safe travels. Beyond the requirements for graduation, certain individuals have distinguished themselves through academic excellence. A diploma with highest distinction is awarded to the top 5% of each graduating class. A diploma with distinction is awarded to the next 15% of each graduating class. Rear Admiral Chatfield, I have the honor to present the United States Naval War College Class of 2020. They have been thoroughly examined and approved by the faculty. By the power vested in me by the Congress of the United States, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, and the New England Commission of Higher Education, I confer upon you the appropriate degrees and diplomas from the United States Naval War College with all the honors, rights, and privileges pertaining thereto.
Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in saluting with our applause the graduates of the United States Naval War College, Class of 2020. Ladies and gentlemen, in a time-honored tradition, we will now play the service songs of our armed forces. Let us celebrate the achievements of this remarkable and resilient group of graduates while we enjoy the photos and the memories they have shared with us from this past year. Commander Nelson will deliver the benediction. Join me as we pray. Eternal Father, strong to save. As we mark the end of our celebration, I ask that you would bless each graduate with a deeper commitment to those values that make the military the most trusted public institution in our nation. Imbue in each of us a renewed sense of purpose and direction and an invigorated desire to serve with honor and courage. Whether student or faculty, staff or family, may your peace be with us. May your grace shine in us, and may your strength be evident in all that we do. We ask these things in the confidence of your holy name. Amen. Ladies and gentlemen, this concludes today's ceremony. We thank you for joining us. Congratulations to our newest group of U.S. Naval War College alumni. I'm Professor Julia Gage, your Director of Alumni Programs. When you started your course of study, you began a lifelong relationship with the college. The War College is committed to your continuing success as you develop as leaders. I invite you to join our robust network of alumni at myusnwc.com. This alumni portal is your hub 
for the resources and networking opportunities to help you succeed. On the portal, you will find lifelong learning resources such as lectures, publications, and professional networking opportunities. On behalf of myself and the over 75,000 U.S. Naval War College alumni, congratulations and good luck.